page 102. And on page 101, Captain Clifford and Tony, who were going towards the war canoe, had been briefly startled by Colonel Hutchett's bugle, and who wouldn't be? But then they carry on with arms swinging loosely so that the natives could see they were carrying no weapons. Could have done this. But then that's, that's, I'm not there. I'm not there, they can't take my advice. A low chuckle came from behind Tony's bushy moustache. <laughs> I know I don't know, that was, that was ridiculous. I'm sorry I even attempted that. Ah, C and C has, has gone into action, he said, but it won't be much use us knowing that it's the flag upon which the sun never sets unless these natives know it too. Hoisting the jack is more likely to help than to hurt us, Captain Clifford said quietly. Oh, hoisting the jack is more likely to help than to hurt us, Captain Clifford said quietly. We'll stop and face the flag and salute. But keep a weather eye on that canoe in case there's a need to duck quickly. What? Colonel Hatchett rested after a good night's sleep. They should put this man in a cage. And with his memory of the call refreshed by the previous evening's performance, sounded the general salute this morning without a single false or faltering note. The stirring call, vibrating from the battered bugle. <laughs> Took, took the natives by surprise too. <laughs> well, yeah. That's probably why they've come, to get hold of whatever made that noise and shove it right up Colonel Hatchett's house. From the corners of their eyes, the two airmen saw them pointing excitedly at the red and white with the, the red, white and blue bunting as it climbed slowly towards the top of the flagpole. as if it were the strident notes of the battered bugle which were lifting it so proudly into the air. It's always the battered bugle, isn't it? It's never just the bugle. I hate the bugle. Suddenly there was a, rus a hu oh, sorry. Suddenly there was a hustle of movement about the flat deck and the huge leg of mutton sail came down. The canoe slackened speed, drifting along with the incoming tide. Then paddles dipped to each side and flashed up again, dripping diamonds into the bright sunlight. I think that's a, that, that's a, that's a nice image. The flag reached the top of the pole. The last note of the bugle, I've been already just been proved wrong about it, always being called a battered bugle, quavered away into the jungle. The two white men turned and continued walking towards the spot to which the canoe was drifting. Now, a dozen paddles were propelling the large craft forward. Little waves rippled from beneath its twin bows. Now, the eyes of all the giant savages were fixed upon this ludicrous display of bugling and flag raising.